go now and um, I offered some general comments on the deliverables here. Um, testability, emphasis on testing um, as, as key, key points of focus. Um, but I want to comment on some areas where I think there's misunderstanding. I have a huge amount of slide material that I can present for this course, and I often keep it keep it kind of close to me for until I can see where it might be useful. And then I roll it out in response to needs that I see. And one of the needs I saw in the past two deliverables was <clears throat> teams falling short and taking advantage of another key element or having misunderstandings regarding another key area. And that is the use of peer review. So I, I wanna talk about peer reviews here. And, um, I actually don't want to spend that much time with this because I have other needs that have come to light too. Uh, but I want to make sure we're on the same page with them. And um, so, you know, I bang on the drum from this very floor about minutes ago about the importance of that. But the truth is, here, particularly in fact, has been found to be more effective Now, I say that but it is not that they're still good to But they actually have a demonstrated to find a larger fraction of defects than testing when they're evaluated side by side. You you can take surveys and, and similar team members, you split them up doing testing versus doing putting emphasis on inspections. You can actually find a larger fraction of of these that um, and <clears throat> they're more cost effective. Um, and we talked about this because peer review finds faults and testing finds failure, and it adds a lot of cost to the bottom line. And they, they kind of they are more flexible than testing. You don't have to wait for executable code, right? You peer reviews on. Give me some other things besides executable code to be sure. Yes, Good. They're on a roll. Yeah, yeah. So give me some other things. Yeah. Other documents? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, test plan, test matrix, design document. Right? Um, we've got a bunch of these things. Um, and perform at all stages, including very early, and, and uh, you can assess, you know, the degree to which uh, stylistic components are being <clears throat> met. Now, I, I actually do want to hit this point about peer reviews being synergistic with that. I said there. More of that. You can only do one to your Don't hey, don't don't get into your ideas. Don't go there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, don't tell me we did the better one. You know, uh, we did the best one. We only did two of No, don't don't get that sort of crude thought in your mind. But the truth is, it, it works together with peer with testing. Why why does peer review help test? Give me give me a few ways peer review can help test. It. Yes, please. Good. Yeah, because you might inspect the uh, right. Yeah, which are that? Yes. Yeah. What are that might help testing? Peer review that looks at begins with C. Yeah. <laughs> like you could you could peer review test, can't you? Why not? Right? You can peer review and test plan. You can peer review and test matrix or for completeness of of you know what tests you're looking for. Are there any gaps, right? Are there certain areas of your system or questions, features, functionality that are not being tested, right? 
Okay, what's another way in which peer review can help test? Yeah. Good, good, yeah. So they get familiar with the code base. I like it. I like that a lot. Yeah. So that's that's true. The testers get a lot more familiar with, with how the code base works. Hunters understand it. What's another way though they help test? I'm sorry, testers is that. That peer reviews help test. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's a bit like Ian's comment um, that it's important that they understand the code base in order to test it effectively. Make sure there's no misunderstanding about how it's supposed to work or what the requirements are, et cetera. So that's uh, that's good. Um, but there are several other features. I mean, amongst other things, um, peer reviews might identify a piece of the code that needs to be tested. Right? There may be certain types of things when you do a peer review. It's so hard to reason about. The race conditions involved, or the, the the complicated situation, interaction with technology, you can say this is a priority for testing. This code is really crusty, right? Like we're not sure how well it will work with this database condition. So you go off and you create that database condition. That's the exception, right? Can imagine that, right? Um, so sometimes peer reviews inspire. Tests. They identify needs for tests. They can improve ideas for how to test effectively by inspecting tests, right? It's not just like you said that they have set up how good a test is doing. They come up with ideas for more effectively testing. So peer review is self testing. How does testing help peer review? How can testing help peer review? And that we will cover more like like assertions or yeah yeah um so it might it might uh help help identify certain points of feedback that come out in peer reviews I guess in terms of putting in assertions yeah okay what else could testing do. With uh, for inspiring peer reviews. Well, yeah, Ian. Um, so, yeah. 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 No, I. I mean, it. It's true that these are two different perspectives on it, and so when you're testing, you may discover that there were a bunch of bugs in this area of the code. So you want to do peer review on it, right? Um, or you discover that sometimes you get a weird error here. You get a weird, you know, it's, it's like one out of a hundred times you get a null pointer exception. So you do a peer review on it, right? To find that, to find the fault, et cetera. Um, uh, okay, so, so what are peer reviews? This is something I really, um, try to answer this already, but um, some of what was in our new three minutes are really So, peer reviews are reviews of sorry for artifacts. They are not, and I repeat, not reviews of you. They're not performance reviews. They're not how is this person doing, you know, uh, how much did they contribute? There's a role for that, but it's not peer reviews in, in of software. It's it's a human resource process. It's a review of how people are, are doing in their job responsibilities, et cetera. And far be it for me to say that's not valuable. It is, but it's a different process that I'm talking about. I'm talking about reviews of software artifacts, of artifacts used in the development process. Okay. Um, and they can be of executable or not executable, right? And they come out in a broad variety of different areas. 
But what modern review occurs remotely in things like pull requests, right? Pair programming and desk check via Zoom and, and those sort of things. They're not necessarily people joining together physically, although they can be. Um, so there's a lot of benefits. I mean, like the person who is reviewing the artifact learns about it, right? Ian said it earlier, please. They learn how it works. They clarify their understanding of the code that's being affected, or the design plan, or the test, the test plan on what kind of the test plan. Um, the person who wrote it gets feedback to improve their techniques, learn more effectively, uh, uh, learn how to how to integrate their their uh, components with the rest of the system if they're writing tests. They may learn a new set of test cases that are needed or how to better document the test. And it spreads knowledge around the team. And peer review is a learning process for teams. More so than testing and time. So to a peer review, you've got a bunch of people learning from the peer from the pull request, or a bunch of people learning from the from the inspection. And they learn how to work, you know, more effectively as a team, more so than is normally the case for for uh, testing. So you want to do early reviews and uh, and engage in this, uh, you know, for many types of artifacts. So unit test, documentation, integration test, documentation, uh, UI uh, design database schema, all these sort of things can undergo peer review. How many people, by the way, how many people in here have taken the web development course? I think it's what, 353? How many people have taken that? Is it now? Are you taking it now? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Maybe that accounts for some things. Okay. Um, the, <laughs> No, 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 that's not a criticism. It's just um, like I was just assuming probably some of you had already taken it, but if you're thinking it now, I can understand why you might not have seen certain material. Yeah. Um, and really, that course in this one, is, you know, are they your first big encounter to basic? Yeah. So, issues of like transactionality and advocacy, issues with with sort of middleware and multi tier architectures, probably that's mostly good. Okay, yeah, I was, I was wondering, like maybe some of that. Yeah, so that was a Yeah, so you get feedback on the project. Uh, um, like the way marketing thing is, I might probably anybody. Uh, I think some projects, that's what I'm talking about. Some projects being quite a long time. So you you've read a lot about yeah. you know, your interventions for him. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. So a lot of self learning, you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, time was I used to have a component in the course focused on multi tier software architecture. Um, or I did it in 470, and I'm actually thinking about going to Boston Map to, to talk about scalable middleware and, and, and uh, uh, multi level and multi multi tier architectures might be worthwhile. Um, so, uh, for multi person reviews, you want to keep them small. I, look, um, there's a lot of review going on. When it comes to inspection, one of the things that it surprised me is there are some inspections that seem to be taking very little time. Um, and um, it is important to keep them uh, less content to but um, you, know, you, you generally want to review that will be quite substantive. And, and so one to two hours is very, very long. Um, I want to talk about more formal reviews uh, and I want to emphasize here keeping these reviews informal. Again, this is not a review of a person's contribution. This is a review of an artifact. And the goal is to be asking questions, how can we do better? 
That's not what processes that we put in place to be approved through this. How could this code be approved? That is a very different issue than saying something just turns in, you know, D better uh, as a D better. Um, they're not totally defense, but generally for these to be productive, you want to focus on those artifacts. Okay. Um and you know, you, you really might want to invite to these things like the other I am being expected. Think about inviting the people who depend on that item. I could be captured, but I might be that item. But it could also be like when you're dealing with the database, it can be the folks with the middleware layer that are that are in the case of the database, right? Um and folks who have created the previous version that's being replaced by this or work with the version of it last last few deliverables or what have you. So, you know, the point is you don't want just a random assortment of people off and you want people who will, who, who, who knows, who have some stake in the game and have some knowledge base to generate. Now there's an argument to be made, why not have a, some broader set of people to spread knowledge? And, and I don't think it's easy. Let's talk about the individual formality of it. Here, if you go between the very, very formal side over there to the left and very informal. And again, I mean, when it comes to like ordering, careful thing, something that's not up here, but really tricky is it's on you or pull request, uh, sort of reviews. But um, the point is, there are some that involve more process. And what do I mean by by process? This is this is where a lot of the the nitty gritty. So a formal inspection involves a lot of things that, for example, an ad hoc review or a, asking someone to look over your code does not. These include preparation before the actual review, like looking at something, planning for it. I'm a meeting, uh, which is common, but sometimes is optional or substantial. Where you make the case internet review, like one person reviews it, not necessarily talking with the other. Um, trying to some verification or correction buttons. And then formal inspections, which are an industry best practice, there's the stage of verification that the corrections are adequate, like follow up. Do you understand that point? Like someone's being asked, to, okay, go and fix the issues and then. It's verified that they are indeed fixed per per plan. Um, so if you compare like inspections and team reviews and walkthroughs, these are sort of more on the, the formal side. These are these ones over over here. Uh, you get you know uh, different parties participating, um, and you have different roles playing. Uh, that, that people are playing. Uh, so recorder, for example, in an inspection, someone to record what's found, whereas in a walkthrough, it's it's kind of a maybe. I'm not gonna be awfully particular about this. I mean, when, when I say you need to do an inspection, I'm not gonna be policing, you know, who is playing the role of the recorder and then they properly record it and it's a different person than the presenter or something. But I want you to know, like. These are industry best practices that have been found to be incredibly valuable, these formal inspections. Now, um, I think I'll, I'll go light in this, but I wanna talk uh, a little bit about formal inspectors. So the more inspectors you have, uh, you can get more wrong, but it can make it harder to schedule and it can make it slow. And you might want to think about having several meetings instead of one big meeting. Let's talk about this issue of formal reviews, though, of review inspection. So often there's a planning well, for these. There is a planning stage, and here um, participants review material on their own before the meeting, and the moderators assign, and and there's objectives 
designated at this meeting. Uh, we've we've done these quite a lot in our lab, and and uh, you know there may be an estimate of the number of meetings. Um, and then there's the decision, you know, who's invited, and they'll they'll invite people, and they'll distribute packages of material. Um, sometimes this is a separate overview meeting. Um, uh, and generally speaking, before and this is critical, before the main meeting or the several, there is review ahead of time of the basic effects. So it's not like people are going and discovering these things for the first time at the meeting. They are asked to review it before, and then they may be asked to judge it against standards or code. Or for stylistic documentation, or for you know the test plan. Is this in accordance with the test plan, or what happens? Um, they have a list that they take down of, of items that they think need discussion, uh, and uh, they may involve be involved with the tools that will help them locate uh, locate defects, uh, and. And it may be that there are some tests that they document. Now, uh, for successive stages, uh, you know, of these meetings, you may identify or um, basically these are findings from the meeting. But at the meeting, there's a set of participants. Okay, now this is something I want you to pay attention. I mean, if you want to learn, this is, again, industry best practice, and time to be incredibly effective, and I don't know how So, generally, there's a set of defined goals. Some people may carry more than one goal. So, here's the thing. There's commonly a moderator who kind of be MC, they're kind of the, the the person who, the protocol master who handles the uh, the running of the meeting, they may also be the reporter who documents the issues or the timekeeper. There's an author sharing, you know, what they wanted to, and but they're not necessarily the one who presents it. Sometimes they're not the one who presents it. Sometimes the one who presents it is, you know, the, the moderator. Um, or the reader. And generally, it's the reader who presents the performance model. And they present pieces of code. The author is there often to, to sort of comment and help interpret things, but the reader is, is often the one actually um, talking about the code that. The author wrote, or more the, the test matrix, or the test, or whatever it is you're discussing. And then there's a set of inspectors who ask questions, who speak the code, can make suggestions, can help identify stylistic concerns, etc. And, uh, you know, often there'll be something like four participants uh, across these. So there may be some overlap here. Um, now, after this meeting, there's some rework here. And here, the authors hopefully address some of those items. Sometimes you might just log items, or log issues, and have others. And, um, and you know, sketch them for further follow up. Uh, but often it leads to an updated work product. They, they update it and uh, an issue log indicating some sort of reference. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes there's follow up and verifiers who, who make sure that the changes have taken place. Um, I think I will pause it there, except, uh, you know, to say I think a big goal of these for your, for your project uh, are going to be identifying practices. Like if you find defects or you find issues in the style or you find problems with the code. Something you can be asking about is like why did this come about? Like how could we have presented this in the future? And how could we have discovered this fact? 
Those are the two big ones. So when you identify a defect, always be asking, how did this, how did this originate? So how can we do that? And how can we not do it? I also want to emphasize that generally you can mean that you're not trying to solve the problem. You may have ideas, you may have suggestions, but you're not trying to get a solution. That will come after the meeting. And then there'll be an updated work product. Here, the goal is to identify problems or possible problems. Maybe to motivate tech that would investigate these problems. But uh, to see if this place is ever reached in the code, to check if this is dead code. But generally, you're not solving the issues at the review. Okay. Okay. So those are my comments on peer reviews. I I provide these comments because there are some misunderstandings that have crept into some teams, and I I'm, I lack confidence that people are really trying to conduct reviews at one of these three levels, which is really what we're trying to see. A somewhat more formal reviews. They are required of you, but I'm looking for you to, to take them seriously in terms of structured attempts to you know seriously investigate code and often circulate it ahead of time. Okay. We okay with that? Okay. So those are going to be all my comments on peer reviews. Any Discussions people want to have about that before we turn to the exercise. I have to yeah. Uh, well, it is a best practice to have that follow up. Um, I think it's good if you can. Uh, I'm not going to be enforcing the documentation of it, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, so, so here's the thing. I want to be pragmatic about it. There may be some deliverables, there's maybe some types of issues that are identified in inspection that you really think it'll be overkill to do a fire. Yeah. And it's not needed. And that's fine. I'm not. I'm not going to require it. Uh, but there may be some places where you know there's enough issues identified, or they are gnarly enough, or require enough rework that it would be really sensible to have a either a second round of review on the revised artifact. Maybe it's a revised argument, revised argument, for example, or a revision to some piece of code or, or to an API where you do want follow up, but more than that, you might just want a second round of that review, right? With that updated document, because it's so critical when you identify a bunch of issues that need to be fixed. Maybe it's a bunch of tests and you identify a need to undertake at least, you know, five different types of tests that are not currently conducted. And there's a whole so big you can drive a truck through. So then you know you go up and you ask them to create those tests and then you convene another of these to follow up. Okay. Do it for your team's sake because I mean if you identify big issues it makes sense you want to you want to make sure they put you back. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, I know. Uh, you said the reader is to read the code and present it. Uh, yeah. The author is obviously there. So is the reader assuming he is also knowledgeable about everything that we call Yeah, it? generally the reader will talk with the author beforehand. Okay. And um, so, uh, do, 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 um, uh, it's, uh, uh, sorry, I'm not sure when. Um, yeah, the, so the, the reader is generally going to need to come up to speed on this, right? And they have to take ownership. Um, they have to take ownership of kind of learning how this thing works, right? And so they're going to be uh, commonly 
in close contact with the author beforehand to learn about the code. I'm not going to enforce for your for this for this class for years. I've not enforced this separation being different, and I think there is a argument to keep them different. Um, to have the author be able to perhaps take note of the process without worrying about you know presenting it and to have a third party presenting it and and really knowing it well like that could be useful for spreading knowledge but i'm not i'm not going to require this you'll notice here material presenter for a walkthrough is the author for a team review here is a moderator but for for an inspection it's a designated user okay um so the, the moderator here is kind of the MC. It's kind of the the one in charge of the process. The reader is a designated party. Yes, G. Sorry? Uh, so, yeah, I did comment on this for one of the teams, and I could, I could send, the, the, probably the best thing for me to do is to just give a, a brief system that, uh, and um, yeah, and uh, that might be helpful, but it's, it's very good. I mean, it's uh, amongst other things, you know, who's there, what was inspected, what were the roles played by the people, um, how long did the meeting go, and, and and you know, what issues were found in it, right? Um, uh, and it would be good to know for the people who attended, like. What in what capacity were they there? So maybe they've been involved in similar tasks, or maybe they had, you know, maybe you're affected because they're the author of the of the artifact being tested or something like that. Um, that would be a good thing to know about. Um, yeah, I, I'd say those are a lot of the things that just off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions on this? Peer reviews, walkthroughs, desk checks, et cetera. These are part of the lifeblood of projects. I mean, they're they're key things for spreading knowledge. And you know, I'm glad to see the teams generally take advantage of them.